name is Quincy. I'm with the Education Opportunity Program. Who has heard of EOP? Great. I guess this is going to be a very easy presentation. So I'm going to be passing around these uh, quick brochures so I can kind of give your hands a little bit of a rest. Because I see that you guys are writing quite a bit. Is this the last presentation? Oh, okay. Is this the last presentation of the day? Great. I mean, I'm going to get y'all very fast, okay? So, EOP, you guys have heard of EOP, Education Opportunity Program, just some background information. Uh, EOP began in 1969. It, it was a program that came out of the Civil Rights Movement to help underrepresented students on university campuses to help them get more acclimated to the campus and to give them support. So essentially, EOP was created to be a support system for underrepresented students. So, um, all right, first thing, what is EOP? As I was saying, it's designed to help improve the access and success of low-income, educationally disadvantaged students. It is for first-generation, low-income students. First-generation, low-income. So you're going to have to fit both of those bills of being first-generation, low-income. Does anybody know what first-generation is? What's up? What's up? Very close, very close. She said the very first person to go to college. Can anybody add a little bit onto it? Um, Correct, yes. So for to be classified as first generation, it just means that your parents did not go and receive a bachelor's degree. So that means they did not go and receive a bachelor's degree. If your brother and sister went, that's fine, but your parents did not go, you are still going to be classified as first generation. Also, students or their parents have to have graduated and received a bachelor's degree. So if they went for a year, they went for two years, they went for three years, but did not graduate, they will, the student will still be classified as first gen. Does that make sense? Great. So, first generation uh, low income students. Uh, sometimes students feel like, I don't know, they don't know if they fit in the bill for low income. I always tell students to apply anyways because worst thing that can happen is that you get denied. And a lot of times they ended up being accepted in any way, so we try to tell everybody to apply anyways. First contact. So this is some of the things that we have a part of EOP. Uh, this is going to be our orientation, as you will say. Uh, so in the summertime, we have the students that are participating in EOP. They come out, they have to participate in this orientation where they get to meet their counselor. They also get to go through all the different uh, resources within EOP. Uh, they also have the opportunity to start talking about what classes that they're going to want to take with their counselors. Also a little special thing with EOP counselors is that their counselors actually stick with them throughout the, all their years at San Diego State. They will have the same counselor so they don't continue to switch off. Next. Transitional bridge. So we have two transitional bridge programs. Uh, this is a program that's to help students acclimate from going to their previous institution to San Diego State. So we have one for first-time freshmen. That's going to be our summer bridge. So that's going to be a five-week-long program where students are able to come to campus. They stay in dorms for these five weeks. They're able to take two classes. A lot of times we encourage <coughs> students to take the classes that they need to remediate in, opposed to paying for fast track. Uh, so they're able to do that. Um, we also have different games, activities that the, the students go through, different trips to like the beach, uh, to the zoo, to some sporting events. And this is completely paid for. It's all free. It's all free. Uh, if we, they did have to pay for it, this will be the price of about $3,000 altogether, and students are able to do it for free. Uh, for students that want to participate in this bro program, you first have to be accepted into the EOP program, and then you sign up for this separately. It's kind of a first-come, first-served basis. Uh, we're only able to have about 100 to 150 slots available for students. So we get quite a bit of students to come in. So it's kind of a first-come, first-served basis. The next transition program we have is going to be our transfer bridge. And this is going to be for transfer students. So this is going to be a camp where students, it's only going to be a week long now. So this transfer bridge is only going to be a week-long camp. Uh, students do not stay in the dorms. They're going to have to commute to campus on a daily basis. Uh, also, they do not take any classes. This is going to be more of different workshops they can do and uh, different meet and greets that they can do with different faculty and staff to help build their connections. And so that's what the transfer bridge is going to be. 
And we have about 100 spaces for that as well. And again, that is too free. Grants, free money. So we do give out money. EOP gives up to 2,000 students a grant every single year. Um, I see that you guys blurred, that you guys seen that we have 4,000 students. So how that kind of works out is that you're not guaranteed the grant. Uh, only thing you have to do to get the grant is be a part of EOP. So it's very simple. And it's kind of almost like a raffle of who's going to get it. So your chances, we got a 50-50 chance every single, every single year to get this grant. The grant is going to be $500. They do give priority to first-time freshmen who are going to be living in the dorms. So if there are first-time freshmen, there's a very, very good chance that they will get one of these grants. Any questions so far? Great, I'm doing my job. Um, academic counselors, I was telling you guys that we do have six counselors. The counselors do stay with the students throughout their whole entire college career. As we say, uh, once an EOP, always an EOP because you can't get out, you know. Um, counselors are always here to be able to talk to students about a lot of personal issues and also along with academic issues. And that's kind of the big thing about our EOP counselors is that you're able to go to them with things such as like trying to find a new apartment, trying to buy your first car, maybe you want new, a new major or whatever you may be looking for, a new career change. We, our counselors are great people to go and speak with. So we do encourage students, and they're also mandated to meet with them at least once a semester. Uh, but we're trying to bump that up to two. So I don't know if you guys know, but EOP is kind of going to start going under some renovations. So what we kind of used to have and what we're going to have may be a little different. Um, but right now, we do have a cat lounge. This is going to be our student lounge area. Um, we are in room Student Services West, room 2109, and with inside of there, we do have a lounge area for students that they can be able to come in, take naps, do uh, have their lunch, or have student, student meetings. Uh, we also have computers around the area as well that they can utilize. Uh, we do also even have a separate computer lab inside our department building that students can use. Uh, we also have printing. Printing is five cents there, opposed to the ten cents on campus. Um, and that is the staff lounge, or the student lounge. This is kind of going to be different. After construction, they're going to kind of be making this more into a learning center type of field that's going to have lounge areas opposed to just one large lounge area. So that's kind of going to be the difference when we move back into our new department after they're remodeled. remodeled. Okay, so now we also have a couple of programs within EOP. And EOP SOAR Mentor is one of them. So SOAR Mentor is when students, incoming students, or even sophomores are going to be paired with a junior or senior who's also part of EOP and in the same major. And you know, just like every other mentor program on this campus, they meet with them, they help them throughout the classes, they help them throughout with their homework, and help them get acclimated to campus. So that is SOAR Mentors. We also have Guardian Scholars. Has anybody heard of Guardian Scholars? Who can tell me what it is? You raise your hand. Yep. My roommate last year was in it, but you get paired with someone who's in the program, but it's for people who don't have, like, a guardian. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Anybody else want to give a crack at it? Um, it's usually, I think, to support those who have been in foster care or foster youth or anything like that, like a ward of the court. Good. Yes. <laughs> so Guardian Scholars Program are going to be for students who were former foster youth, wards to the court, or homeless. Former foster youth, wards to the court, or homeless. Uh, does everybody understand what wards to the court is? Wards to the court is say if your, your parents pass away in a car accident and you have no one else to take you, and then now you become a ward of the court. So for former foster youth, wards or the court, or homeless students. This is going to be another support system within, within EOP. And they have, it's a little bit different because they're more hands-on with their, with, with their uh, support. They actually do things such as uh, cover a percentage of their housing. They also cover a percentage of their tuition. Uh, they give them a lot of things like school supplies, take them on even like school shopping sprees and clothes shopping sprees to really help them get a lot of different things that to us may seem very simple, but for them is very, very important and big and they don't really have a lot of resources. 
So this program is here to be able to support those students, and it does a very good job. We have roughly around 97 students currently in this program. And it's actually started on this campus. A Guardian Scholars program and slash uh, the Renaissance program is a program that's starting to become more nationally for, uh, for this population of students. And uh, San Diego State was actually one of the first universities to house this program. It was started by a couple of people that was on their campus in EOP. So that's one random fact. So another student group that we have is ESOB, EOP Student Advisory.